It's Dow Super Hertz. John, what happened? Oh, I'm first because I'm standing sitting in the corner. I should move. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the JMOL integration into the new Flask notebook. We've got an S package up and a version of Flask on Google Code that should work with it as long as you do the patch to Sage that's in the track ticket associated with using Flask and JMOL and Sage. People need to try it. So that's where that is. Today, for oh. the JMOL stuff, yeah? Do you have a server up and running we can try it out? Somewhere. No, because my server died, so do we have it up anywhere? Happen. So that we don't have to... I can set we, that up. We I'll, I'll, try to set one I'll up. just set it up on all the servers. Okay. Okay, let's do that. The, um, the other thing I want to work on, so I need people who are a little more familiar with the Plot3D Python code, is I want to repackage the data that Sage sends to JMOL into one of those JMOL files that I showed you you could save to disk and load back into the program because then we can just add a download button to the page. Mm -hmm. So that's my plan for it. So you'll help me with that? Good. That's my plan for today is to work on that. Okay, cool. All right, Rob? I uh, worked mostly yesterday afternoon with uh, David on MathJax. We, with the Flask notebook, we had everything working, and then we tried to make it a little better and, and spent a lot of time learning how the notebook works, and we can roll back, I think, today and get things working, so I think. And uh, John Palmieri helped us with that as well, so we had a good, good group of different people working on that. So I think that will probably happen. Hopefully David and I will be able to get that in good shape today. And I think I'm going into administrative mode today, <laughs> catching up on some of the organization. But uh, yeah. there's a textbook. Uh, he was going to run a textbook uh, group session this afternoon, so I'll certainly be interested in that and available at that in the, up here in the bubble. So come to that if you have an interest in textbooks, open source textbooks, textbooks in the notebook, all that kind of stuff. What time is that? Yeah. What time is that? Uh, we don't have a time. You want to say two? Uh, Give people the time to have lunch. Sure. Two, two o'clock. We'll, we'll find a room. You'll find us. Or we'll put it on an IRC or something. Okay. Uh, Ian? Um, so I'm just adding this to the project page right now. Links to it. It's on the uh, work groups page. So for the notebook LDAP uh, work, I worked with uh, Rado yesterday to get things running, and I've now got. Um, uh, now got LDAP in Sage. That was a little bit harder than expected. The easy it, Python LDAP did not easy install on a couple different systems. I tried it out. I didn't try earlier versions of Sage, but four point seven I couldn't easy install Python LDAP. And there were a few gotchas in getting that running. Now that I've got it there uh, and I've got basic authentication working from the command line, the integration with the uh, actual running server is trying to be a little problematic because the user accounts are all basically loaded up in memory as far as we can tell, as far as our understanding is. And the notebook assumes it's got complete knowledge of all the users in the system, which isn't really going to be realistic going forward to an LDAP environment where LDAPs, the LDAP environment is going to be responsible for managing the user accounts and the notebook is really just going to have a read-only view and the ability to do um, password checking binds. Um, but hopefully today we'll work through some of those things. But it does raise some questions about the overall model for identity management, authentication and authorization in Sage Notebook, um, and ownership and access controls around worksheets. So we're sort of thinking and talking a bit about some alternatives that could exist there. And there's a lot more, yeah, Rob's found that there are a lot more notes on the Notebook LDAP page on the Sage Wiki. Okay, excellent. Uh, so okay. the tutorial translation is uh, done and uh, is waiting for, for house final approval that everything is uh, compiling for the documentation and all uh, tests pass. I worked on reviewing a few other tickets uh, and uh, I am working on uh, cleaning up for the waiting mode uh, uh, module in uh, Sage uh, and uh, I've got uh, string representations uh, to be processed in the way I wanted. Uh, but it does not yet weigh nicely with uh, the rest of the framework, so I'll hope to finish it today, probably. Okay. 
Um, so I was working on getting Sage into web work, and we've got one of the blocks out of the way, and I've been working with Jason Grout and Ira and with David. Uh, there's a second block on cross-domain type injection that, that they're working on for that. As a byproduct of that, I was able to put JMOL into web work as a, as a mm. demonstration, at least, so that's, that's kind of neat. Um, and with Jason Aubrey, I've been working on getting uh, Sage uh, uh, into web work in some sense so we can uh, use the web service from web work and call it from Sage and uh, it may end up that we can use end up using Sage as an editor for, for web work problems so you can actually mm -hmm. design your web work problems in Sage and create them that way which, which would be nice to be. Uh, Very cool. So you're doing Sage and web work and web work in Sage? And yes. <laughs> and, and people are interested in the recursion. <laughs> so I don't think Sorry? Would that allow use of, of Sage's backend for the uh, No, that, that's not something that we've done yet. So that, we're, that's we're, more of the, I think that's more of the embedding Sage into WebWork. So, yeah. But I think that what's cool and related to your project is since we've got WebWork embedded in Sage is potentially for textbooks, you could kind of have at the end of a, a textbook section, you could have a list of WebWork problems that you could mm -hmm. directly click on. They appear in a Sage notebook and the student submits the answer through. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's your homework sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can add homework sets to, 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 to Sage Notebook well, in some sense. Um, so anyway, there's and actually there's more than one way you can embed web work in Sage already. There's a really easy way in which you can kind of automatically just slide over to another web page with the, the entire assignment homeworks. So um, so anyway, that's going pretty well at the moment, and I was in the prep workshop also. Okay. Volker? I was working with Bushin on the Pliner activities and I was started off by just trying to clean up a little bit the infinity handling and then <coughs> the infinity GNAC, which was the base of Pinac, doesn't have no infinity, so Bushin originally added infinities in on top of that in Pinac. And then it is bit like page and page of leaf branches where you have handling of infinities that are pretty opaque and I found I, I haven't fixed it, I only found more bugs in handling <laughs> infinities, so I'm trying to make a more systematic infinity handling in Pinac and that should clean up some of the code hopefully and I hope you finish that. Cool. Okay. Hi. Um, so yeah, if you can get the GeoGebra stuff up there. Um, so yeah, I've made real progress on um, putting GeoGebra into um, Sage, and <coughs> that um, talking to Grado, um, there's something called iframe in HTML, which allows you to bring a page into another page. And I wrote a, a, a Python um, function that will put this together. And um, put that in, it's going to be a method under HTML. So like HTML, um, Mm -hmm. dot table, this is HTML dot iframe. And uh, there's a ticket for it, and there's a patch, and it's ready to be reviewed. And um, my hope is maybe during the ed days to, uh, to give a demonstration of this. Cool. Um, I've worked with the prep workshop and just various other people doing lots of different things. I guess one big highlight is Ryan uh, finally found a reproducible case for the <laughs> one of the yeah, big yeah. bugs for the text thing, which immediately led us to uh, uh, narrowing it down to the Tiny MCE autosave plugin that wow. we've been loading ever since we incorporated Tiny MCE. I think that might be the problem that's causing us all this grief about text cells shifting around and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was going to run a little, few more tests and then working with Ira on the single cell server and various other people on trying to do this and get the single cell server to work better. Cool. Okay, so yesterday I tried to uh, use uh, Majax into a HTML page generated by REST and also from the same REST file open it in the notebook so that uh, both works like. And uh, last night I worked on the Quantumino uh, puzzle <laughs> <laughs> so you, you will get a working demo soon. <laughs> <laughs> and today I will uh, work on the rest of the notebook project again. Okay, excellent.
Um, so I had been working on getting um, th a set of internationalization patches ported over to the Sage notebook or the Flask version of the notebook. Um, so I have a patch which uh, should apply to that, and we'll let you go in. Um, right now, it's just at a per notebook server level. Um, lets you switch the language. Um, so right now there are uh, translations for Portuguese and Czech. Um, and I think Dan Drake has one for Korean. So I'd like to get that up. Um, I'll post the patch on track today. Um, and then it would be good if someone was interested in that to um, take a look at it. But then also um, there's probably been some changes uh, since that was first made, and so there may be some like strings hanging around somewhere that need to be translated. Um, but it should be pretty straightforward to do since there are lots and lots of examples that do work. Um, and then <clears throat> um, yesterday I wrote a couple of patches to uh, the notebook, which like the um, idea was just to make the notebook a little more scalable so that we could actually put sagenb.org up. Um, and the main one was uh, the notebook object in Python had a basically a dictionary of every single worksheet that existed in memory. Um, and so when the notebook server started up, it had to go through every single worksheet from the text file and build up sort of the in-memory uh, uh, in memory version of that worksheet. And so it would take um, an hour for sagenv.org to start just going through all of the files um, and building these objects. And so now it doesn't do that. There are a couple of places that use this, but you can change them to be lazier. So hopefully that will um, improve the performance. Uh, do you want to say something on that, William? Sure. Um, I guess just in addition, we actually deployed this stuff and then uh, tested it out and found a whole bunch of bugs and issues and then fixed them all, or well, all the ones we found. Um, but there are surely many more. Um, so now all the 11 uh, various servers like uw.sagenb.org, sagenb.org, demo.sagenb.org, et cetera, are now running the Flask notebook. Um, and they have this new code that makes them more scalable. So if you try sagenb.org right now, it might actually work, which is pretty exciting. Maybe you could try it, Rob? So, um, so it, <laughs> good, yeah. Maybe the page will come up. Um, it's now running, so there's some interesting things. So the Flask server really definitely is multi-threaded as we very clearly established by uh, using PS. Um, we want to look into uh, controlling the number of threads it uses and so on. So we're not really sure what it's doing, but it's definitely multi-threaded. We uh, adjusted some of the locking because we had issues with, say, creating a new worksheet being kind of slow uh, because, I mean, really it's safe to create several worksheets at once if you write things correctly. Um, so anyways, that's not valid Python. Oh, yeah, what are you, Mathematica that, yeah. user? <laughs> not factorial, of course. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the notebook should be much more usable now. and. Um, I also consolidated all the 11 notebook servers into one single directory and um, put them all in one machine. So it used to be that somewhere on a virtual machine that would crash sometimes with like, you know, Linux would just crash on the virtual machine all the time because VirtualBox kind of sucked. Um, so that's the situation. And then what I'm mainly planning to do today is to look a little bit more at, um, s at security and robustness. So for example, it'd be nice if um, it were easy to make it so that the code that you run actually runs in a different machine instead of on the same machine. That would uh, have a great potential improvement in security. So that's probably the main thing I want to work on today is just the security and organizing. So I put all the notebook servers in one directory, but it's still not completely trivial to say start and stop all of them and see exactly what's going on. So I want to improve the management a little bit. So somebody besides me can easily manage all the notebook servers and they all start up automatically if you say reboot the server or something like that. Okay, um, so next. Did you guys uh, learn some Sage? Yeah, uh, I got uh, VirtualBox, Ubuntu working, so I got that all down. Nice. Um, learning how to do simple programs, starting to create them. 
Uh, hopefully today I'm going to sit in on the textbook session mm -hmm. to see what that's all about and just listen in cool. as I can. So. Um, I was working with uh, Python more, um, looking at some tutorials online. I'm feeling pretty comfortable now. Um, Excellent. And I learned a little bit about web work um, later in the evening. Uh, and I'm also hoping to go to the textbook session. Cool. So um, I went to the, uh, the prep workshop in the morning uh, with Jason Carl Dieter. Um, and then, like Mike said in the afternoon, um, I was working with Mike and getting some help from Jason as well on um, using the Python XML RPC lib to um, call out to the web work RPC web service and embed web work problems uh, into, into the Sage notebook um, in a pretty native way. And um, so I'll talk more about that, I guess, during our web work presentation. And we're pretty excited about like, the possibilities of integration with um, like textbooks and stuff. And um, it would be cool too, maybe you see some suggestions for the notebook about um, maybe enabling a soap web service of your own from the notebook. Um, and then also maybe installing like some kind of soap client library because we have a pretty nice soap web service we could use too. OK. As Rob mentioned, we uh, spent most of the afternoon trying to uh, clean up the MathJax implementation for that. And our head is loaded by early success. We, uh, <laughs> for we forged on, and the pie truck hit us. So, uh, no. And that's a story he can tell you. Uh, and so uh, we ran into some trouble. We were trying to get the output to include the script tags rather than the old style JS math tags and there's some issues with how they output once it's sent to the notebook the uh, the library code of JavaScript they're uh, mm. taking the output and sticking it into the page there's some issue there that we couldn't quite track down so we're probably going to roll back and go back to the JS math style tagging but, uh, but fix it up so that there won't be the problems with the uh, special characters inside of that uh, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to have gotten that to be a little bit, and to, to not be based on the JS math approach. But it'll work the other way, so that's not a problem. Um, in the evening, Jason and I spent some, I think, valuable time thinking about the client server model for the single cell process uh, in terms of cross domain issues. Uh, we came up with, I think, a design that, that should work nicely for them. I implemented a, a, a uh, example of that this morning, and uh, Jason hasn't seen it yet, but I, uh, I think he's got another approach that he's going to use. But uh, it's uh, useful, I think, to have a, an example, of, a small working example of that. Okay. So I have some code from Sage Days 30 that uh, Michelotti area and Laura Ivera wrote for me that I'm supposed to be adding some, some tests to and documenting and, and putting up on the track server as a patch. But I couldn't get it running on my computer. Um, and I managed to change it so it was giving me a different error, but then I figured there was probably something wrong with my particular install of Sage, and then I broke my Sage. Um, and it's now building from source, and it got past the problem that I was having last night. We'll see. Um, so uh, I'm trying to install Sage, <laughs> and uh, this afternoon I'll talk with people about uh, textbooks uh, and issues with, with including Sage in textbooks, including textbooks in Sage, um, and that we have set for 2 p.m. Uh, so I've been working on the TinyMC code in their integration thing a bit, and uh, gotten it to integrate in the sense that you can't actually evaluate or interact outside of the um, the interface, but you can get text in between um, our plain text cells and uh, this nice coding environment, um, which looks really pretty right now. So uh, that's nice. Um, I've also been working on some code that I've been working on for the past few weeks as well. So that's what I'm working on. Did you turn off the auto save plugin for Tiny and CD? Yeah. Um, haven't checked yet. <laughs> okay, so do it. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, my major contribution yesterday was being able to reproduce the uh, the error. <laughs> so, um, I also um, been working on plot 3D. There's a problem I've been having, so I found a workaround for it. But I've been also trying to see if I can figure out what's causing the problem. So I'll try to make it what I've been doing. But I 
shouldn't start so big, Carl Reader said. But nonetheless, I'm also trying. I'm buying into the culture here. This is a, this is a, this is kind of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, worked uh, pretty hard with the uh, workshop most yesterday, um, and uh, doing a couple other tickets in between, and uh, giving positive review to a few things. And uh, then I went and visited some uh, good friends of ours who live by Everett. And I'm well rested, so I'm ready to work a lot. <laughs> nice. Ready to work. Okay. Um, as Jason and uh, John were helping with reproducing that bug in the notebook where texts for tiny MCE cells would kind of like do weird things. Um, been working with that and just some other random tickets on track. Um, also trying to get the single cell server up and running on my laptop, but still having problems with that. So maybe, um, oh, really? yeah, with the SSH authentication. So, um, other than that, plans for today are to look at or to sit in on the event plot the plot 3D discussions and the textbook discussions. <coughs> okay. Jason. So I've been doing a couple of things. <coughs> uh, working on sage.colorado.edu, uh, setting that up for last minute. Yeah. And I actually have a question about that. Uh, one of the things that we've decided to do so that we it's going to be available to the entire campus and anybody on campus can create an account on it. And the way that we that we have set up to do that right now is that it's behind the campus firewall. If you want to use it from home off campus, you have to VPN to campus uh, or X4 or you know, whatever so that, that it's sense. getting access from somewhere on campus. Um, what I'd like to be able to do, and this might be possible, is to allow people to create accounts as long as they're coming from a, a certain IP address, um, being on campus, mainly. Uh, and the way that I do that normally is just through like HD access, send them to different pages, whatever. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to do that. But are you raising your hand? Yeah, we face the same situation at Drake, where I only want Drake students to be able to log yep. in. And so I think the easiest solution is to either use LDAP integration or have Drake set up an open ID server. That way they can log in from anywhere, and it actually uses their Drake unified password, so I don't have to worry about password security and everything. That's so if you can set up an open ID server, then all of a sudden this last notebook, I think, will solve all your problems. I think that's, yeah, I'll, I'll actually ask about that. I'm supposed to make it accept only one open ID server. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we need to make Flask accept only, you know, your open ID server, but then you can pass off yeah. all the authentication and everything to the university infrastructure. That would be perfect. Um, okay, I'll look into that. The other things I've been working on, um, I'm going to submit a ticket for, this doesn't really have anything to do specifically with the notebook, but the incident structures and block designs, uh, I added some stuff and, and uh, updated a bit of the documentation. So, some things are actually uh, incorrect. There's, there's a couple of bugs. Uh, but then I'm, I'm going to work on uh, GAPS design package, which does sort of the same things, but it, it takes some different classes in Sage that are hard to work with together. Uh, I'm going to try to make something just in the notebook to, to just show that gap packages can be used in a graphical way uh, that, that can be of some benefit. Um, and I wanted to go to the textbook today. Yeah. OK. Um, Ira? Um, I worked on the, the single cell interacts. Uh, yesterday, and I fixed it so that now it works. But now you can do interacts within interacts. <laughs> and um, today, I'm going to, I guess, maybe work a little bit more on the interacts and also make it figure out how to make it so that you can embed a single cell within another website. Nice. Okay. Yesterday, I Today I want to make it usable to the chains and maybe connect it to the, uh, the polyadrome stuff over there. And uh, I started the translation too quick and mm. I will maybe continue. Uh, and today there is some simple symbolic stuff and I may uh, try to fix something there. Okay. 
Okay. Question? So I spent most of my time staring at the finite patches to fix the other issues, which is the sack folks and view that is. And I cleaned up some of Champier's right patches. One patch. But other things crept up, so they need to be cleaned up more and there were some issues of you know we need to keep the user access to the open and use a consistent protection, not something that is random at one time. So I will be working on fixing those things now. And so the display is not very pleasant with the new thing, so that needs to be fixed. Cool. I guess we should also sort out the crashes in Python 27 and I can help people with symbolics issues. And if anybody wants to write documentation, I can do that. Okay. Um, sure. So I did some more work here consulting yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I also helped rather find some Unicode bug. Uh, nice. So, and I somehow managed to twice inadvertently recompile my entire Sage library <laughs> <laughs> while trying to uh, while trying to compile Python in Sage with SSL support, which I still can't do for some reason. So if anyone has a bright idea about how to do that, uh, please contact me. What exactly are you trying to do? Sorry? What exactly are you trying to do? I was trying to recompile Python by forcing the Python S package. Um, I have all the SSL libs installed and the dev headers and everything, but it's not installing the SSL module when it comes up. And every time I do that, then all the files are updated in the libs, so I have to recompile everything the next time I build Sage. So that was taking some time. And then I also, while I was waiting for Sage to recompile the libraries, I also worked on the name graphs database, which has some uh, tickets which are there for adding new name graphs. Cool. That could relate to the notebook, but yeah. Hey, so, uh, William sent me his uh, log from, uh, so we, we were running Flask at, at flask.sagemb uh, for three months now. So basically going through the log and uh, seeing what errors pop up. So one thing we noticed is this uh, Unicode problem with the source code viewer. And me and Kishev uh, made a little bot that goes through all the, uh, all the possible source code web pages and uh, figures out which ones crashes on. And we figured out it's just a Unicode problem. And it's, so now, it's, now that's working fine. So I'm planning to continue going through these errors and try to fix all of them. And, I've been helping uh, random people with random questions about our book. So if anybody else has more questions, you can answer that. Okay, so I think that's everybody. All right, good. So.